Good evening. Whoops. Good evening. That, uh, that was from the Ventura City and County Honor Guard and the Ventura City Firefighters Pipes and Drums. And now we're going to have the national anthem uh, sung by Carmen Liliaquist. Chaplain Bob Amici will deliver the invocation. Good evening. Before I pray, I just want to share a couple of scriptures from the Bible with you. And the first one is for our heroes tonight. And I'm going to put this verse in my own words. And it basically says, there is no greater love than for a person to lay down their life for another. Heroes, thank you. And for my fire family, there's a verse in the Bible that speaks about our group, our family. We're like a body and all the members care for each other. If one suffers, all suffer with them. And if one is honored, all others are glad. I'm going to pray. My holy and heavenly Father, as we gather together, I come before you with great thanksgiving for these men and women and what they've done. I thank you for their courage and their selflessness as they jumped into harm's way to save another. I thank you and ask that your blessings would be on them, that the windows of heaven would open up and your blessings would fall forth on each of them and their families. And at this time, I also want to come before you as this is the anniversary of 9-11. And I just pray comfort for all the families that have lost someone. I pray that you would continue to comfort them. Comfort them, hold them close to you. And I pray for our men and women as the first responders. I ask for their protection. Be with us this night. And I pray all these things in my precious Savior's name, Jesus. Amen. Okay, you can be seated. Thank you. 
So I'm told now that dinner will be served and uh, there are a few remarks I'm going to make and Cheryl Heitman is going to uh, give you a welcome from the city of Ventura. So the first thing I want to do is to introduce those uh, elected officials who are in the audience. Uh, I've, I've seen some of these, but not all. Uh, so, Neil Andrews is here from the city of Ventura, Steve Bennett from the Ventura County Supervisor's Office, Cheryl Heitman, Mayor, Mayor of the city of Ventura, David Andania, Fire Chief from the city of Ventura, Representative of, of Das Liam's Office, Maggie El Susa. Okay, I think that's right. Representative from Assemblyperson Jackie Irwin's office, Nancy Frawley, uh, and Bob Engler, the Lieutenant Governor for the, uh, for the 42nd Division of Kiwanis. And if there are others who are here that I didn't mention, let me know and we'll mention you later. Okay, this print is very small, so you never know, right? <clears throat> the, uh, this has been going on since 2002. That was the year after 9-11-2001. So this is our 13th year. And uh, we are proud to be able to sponsor this in Ventura County, excuse me, in Ventura City. It is for the entire county. Uh, we have had assistance from the Oxnard uh, Kiwanis Club, and otherwise it's just Ventura and Oxnard this year. There will be others later. But uh, so far, those are the two who helped sponsor this. So now I'd like to have Cheryl Heitman come up and give you a welcome from the city of Ventura. They don't even have a box here anymore. They used to have a box here, so I could be seen, but. Um, well, it's my pleasure to welcome you here tonight. Good evening. Um, on behalf of the City of Ventura and, and our City Council, we're really honored to be hosting this event at the Crown Plaza. Uh, we, do, we did bring you this beautiful weather. Uh, we're working on it, making it just a little cooler, but uh, you still look out in the evening skies and see why we all love Ventura. I want to also um, thank particularly Council Member Neil Andrews, one of my fellow council members, who really this was his brainchild. He really was the originator of this event. And it's such an incredibly wonderful event to be able to recognize not only local heroes, those of you who are just ordinary citizens, you're not ordinary, but you're citizens, you're not really in service, and you're called for some, by some higher power to rescue people and to save their life. And this is something that when we're faced, we never know would we be able to do this. These people have not hesitated, they've done it. So to those, we wanna honor and thank them. And then to our firefighters, who I think we couldn't be prouder of, our city firefighters, I know all the other mayors and council members feel that way about their uh, firefighters also. But really, we have an incredible fire department led by Chief and Daya. And we're very proud, we know that they're very professional and when they go on a call, they're gonna really make it, ha it end in a very positive, good way. So we wanna thank you for all you do for all of us. And we're happy that tonight we get to recognize all of you. So enjoy your dinner and enjoy your evening. Thank you. Oh, she was better at that. So uh, thank you for your attention. Have a, a good meal. I, I see the salads are now being served. We'll be back here in about 20 minutes to start the program. Thank you. Oh, by the way, Bruce Barrios is our DJ extraordinaire who's going to be playing dinner music while you're, while you're eating. I know that most of you are still eating and dessert has not yet been served. Normally I want to wait till the dessert gets served, but we have 14 different awards being given tonight. So if we don't keep on some kind of a schedule, uh, you'll be here at Old Dark 30, still sitting there waiting for that to happen. And I apologize for the first few presenters who are gonna come up, because I know you're still gonna have the broccoli stuck in your teeth while you're presenting, but uh, the rest of you can, can have time to digest your food. <clears throat> so the process is, is we're going to be asking the award recipients and their presenters, their chiefs, or their uh, I guess they're all chiefs in one way or another, 
to uh, come up on this side of the stage and then exit that side of the stage and you're welcome to take pictures over here next to our sponsor banner. And incidentally, I'll be uh, mentioning those sponsors uh, toward the end of the evening. One uh, little correction I'd like to make before we start is that I mentioned that, uh, okay, I mentioned that the Oxnard Club was uh, co-hosting and I didn't mention any other Kiwanis Club. Well, I was wrong on that. The Thousand Oaks Club is also co-hosting, so thanks to the Thousand Oaks Kiwanis Club for assisting us with this. It's always better when you're not mentioned in the program because you get a special announcement like that. All right, so to get the proceedings started, from the Santa Paula Fire Department, uh, Captain John Harbour is our recipient and is be being presented by Chief Rick Ariaza. I said that wrong, didn't I? Ariaza. Well, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Captain John Harbour, uh, who's been with us uh, approximately 30 years experience in the fire service. Uh, he began with us in 1990 as our fire prevention officer. Uh, John has a distinct uh, specialty in our department in that he's the longest tenured full-time person on our department because before 1990, we were, during 1990, we were a volunteer department. So John was our full-time uh, fire inspector at the time, transitioned into our full-time department. So in actuality, he's the longest tenured full-time person on the fire department that is actually a city employee. Uh, John, John took on some extra duties this past year and we had uh, had somebody leave our department that was our, uh, did our school programs. We went to the captains and John happily stepped forward and said, you know, I got some grandchildren, I'd love to work with, with the school children and he took it on uh, with like a wildfire. He basically changed the whole program, put together an essay contest, gave a perpetual trophy to the school district, and uh, it, it has done wonders for our fourth grade education uh, and our smokehouse program. So John excelled at this. Everybody in the department was getting rave reviews because of John. Everywhere we'd go to a school program, uh, John, we were getting uh, accolades that, that was the result of John's hard work. In addition to that, he was also a hazmat specialist and he was is really helping with our Coupa program. Uh, it, it became so, so, so hard to continue that with the, uh, with the school programs that he, he no longer does that. But, but he was instrumental in, in, in that portion and setting that up earlier in his career. Um, so for all these reasons, uh, John was voted on as our Firefighter of the Year, and I'd like to present John Harbor, Captain with Santa Paula Fire Department. Thank you. Thank you. It's uh, been a pleasure to serve the citizens of Santa Paula and to receive this award. I'm very humbled. Thank you. So the next recipient is from the Ventura County Fire Department Battalion 1. The recipient is Firefighter Joseph Dullum, being presented by Battalion Chief Bill Brooklander. Very good. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Firefighter Joe Dullum uh, was presented this year with a Battalion One Firefighter of the Year. Joe began his career with Ventura County Fire in 1999. He has his Associates of Science in Fire Science and his Bachelor's of Science in Fire Administration. <clears throat> Joe works as a Firefighter Paramedic Fire Station 50. Our Fire Station 50 has the distinction of having four different responsibilities. Joe is an engine-based firefighter. He's a squad-based paramedic. He performs air crash, crash rescue on the camera airport and off the airport, and he's a member of our hazardous materials response team. 
All of these require a very high level of skill and dedication. Two of these skills, the aircraft crash rescue and hazmat, require that firefighter Dullum dedicate his time and effort to be an expert in these disciplines. <clears throat> firefighter Dullum readily accepts the challenges to meet these demands. He has also taken on the responsibility to be a paramedic preceptor. This responsibility requires time, patience, mentoring, and training that is necessary for us to ensure the sustainability of our, of our program. Joe consistently sets the example for newer paramedics by providing outstanding leadership, guidance, and most of all, professional clinical care. That alone would have earned Joe this award. However, Joe likes to challenge himself. Joe's a member of our self-contained breathing apparatus cadre, and he leads the research and development and testing for that cadre. He's also part of our live burn cadre, our rapid intervention cadre. He's a department EMS instructor. He does our hazmat monitor maintenance. He is also our representative on the county pre-hospital care services committee. Joe and his crew at Fire Station 50 have been responsible for the active development of the, our active shooter task force training and curriculum. And Joe serves as an instructor training both law enforcement, military, and fire personnel. <clears throat> the success of every organization is dependent on its personnel. When an organization has personnel that are not just merely involved but fully committed to its mission, great things are achieved. In appreciation for his continued commitment to the success of the Ventura County Fire Protection District, and more importantly, the citizens we serve, it's my pleasure to present Joe Dullum as a Battalion One Firefighter of the Year. Thank you. Thank you very much. You, you can see back here that there are uh, awards being given. The big trophies go to the department, come back to us every year. The firefighter's name has been put on them. There are the personal plaques that go to each of the firefighters who are being honored this year. And then there are certificates, and the certificates are being given out from Julie Brownlee's office, Hannah Beth Jackson's office, Fran Pavley's office, Jackie Irwin's office, and Doss Williams' office. So they have all these kinds of things that they can put on their wall, you see. <clears throat> so going right along from Ventura County Fire Department Battalion 2, the honoree is Captain Richard Talcladarian and it was be presented by Battalion Chief Darren Anderson. We like it's, it's always better if your name is Anderson rather than Talk Darian. It's <laughs> well, just on behalf of Fire Chief Mark Lorenzen, I'd like to uh, thank all the Kiwanis for this great uh, evening and fellowship together. So I'd like to all of us take a minute to thank the Kiwanis here. Thank you very much. I'd also like to take a moment to reflect a little bit on 9-11. 243 firefighters lost their lives uh, 14 years ago today, along with a lot of dedicated police officers and citizens of our country and military personnel. So let's give them a round of applause as well. I'd also like to thank our political leaders that are here because without them supporting public service, we would not be able to do our job. So we really appreciate your support and dedication to what this, the, if you look to your right and your left, this is Homeland Security. These are the men and women that make our lives uh, uh, safe and also the heroes here that are among us that have taken that step of dedication and we'll be rewarding those uh, folks soon. But I'd like to uh, say that uh, my name is Norm Plott. I'm the division chief. Uh, Darren Anderson got called away uh, to the Butte County uh, about two hours ago. 
And the last time I, I filled in for somebody, um, it was Ted Smith, my colleague, and after I got back, one of the ladies, I never corrected the fact that I was Norm Plott and said Ted Smith, and she said, you know, I noticed Ted's put on a little bit of weight, so. <laughs> So I can tell you Darren's a lot more handsome and a lot thinner gentleman than I am, but uh, I just thought I'd better set the record straight. We're here to say thank you to Richard Tutarian, uh, fire captain, and because Tutarian's hard to say, we all call him Tukey, and so you call him Tuk, and you know, that's, that's who he is, but the gentleman standing to my left is a fireman's fireman. He's a fire captain, he's dedicated, he's a problem solver. He's somebody that when he's given a difficult task, he always knows how to make it better, no matter what that is. He's also been given a name called MacGyver, so if you can kind of think about MacGyver, MacGyver was the guy that would get, he would just be able to fix something with duct tape and a couple of sticks. Well, that's Tukey, because if it's broken, by gosh, he'll make it, he'll make it better. He's a captain that when, you, when you're out on a fire or strike team, you're glad to see his fire truck come because you know his, tr his company is well trained. You know that he cares about the people that he's responding to. He's got a big heart and he's somebody that you know is gonna give excellent customer service to the public. And so it's with that, I would like to say thank you to Captain Richard Tukdarian and we're honored to have him as a Firefighter of the Year for Battalion 2. Thank you, Tukey. From Ventura County Fire Department, Battalion 3, Firefighter Ryan Flitt, and the presenter by D Division Chief Norm Platt. Is this Norm Platt over here? Platt, yeah, Norm Platt. Norm Platt. Okay. So, you know, you, you're second fiddle here, huh? Yeah. It, yeah? <laughs> It's gonna happen a little bit more than once because I notice we've got Norm Plot, Norm Plot, and Norm Plot coming up. So there's gonna be a little delay in each of these awards. We wanna make sure they get their photos. There you go. Well, uh, <clears throat> I'd just like to say that, uh, sorry that uh, some of our presenters uh, were taken away uh, because duty calls. But this next gentleman standing on my left, Ryan Flitt, he was, uh, he was, he was one of our guys that uh, was on our hand crew. He started as a cadet, and then he, then he worked his way up as a Ventura County hand crew. And we have a saying, once a stump jumper, always a stump jumper. But he's one of those guys that's dedicated to the fire service. He's got a big heart, he's caring, and he's somebody that you, you want to see coming through that door. And also I'd like to say is behind every good man there's a good woman. Uh, back here, uh, his, wife, his wife is with us, Nikki. Uh, she's a nurse. And earlier today, we had one of our engineers retired, 36 years on the job, was taken to the hospital. And it was, it was Ryan's wife that was there by his side taking care of taken care of. So service to the public and service to individuals runs in Ryan's family. So I'd just like to say that. But Ryan is somebody that's dedicated to the fire service. He works over on Truck 30 in Thousand Oaks. He's somebody that uh, recently went through. We're trying to be good stewards with the, uh, with the water situation. And Ryan designed the garden out in, in front of Station 30 low water so that, it, number one, it looks presentable to the public, but also that we're doing our part to reduce the use of water and, and to set a good example. So Ryan, Ryan did that and made our station look not only good, but also saved a lot of water in the process. So we appreciate that with Ryan. A couple of things from some of his colleagues. He's lighthearted, he's positive, he has an excellent attitude. Uh, <laughs> One of his colleagues said, uh, he's, he's, he's a high pyro ratio in a small package. <laughs> he's somebody that uh, has a lot of energy 
and he's somebody that definitely cares about the public. And so his training as a cadet, his training as a hand crew, and as a firefighter, he's also very involved in the fire service on cadres, and it's just a pleasure to have Ryan Flitt as our Firefighter of the Year in Thousand Oaks. Thank you for your excellent service, Ryan. So I've got to give Norm a little more time, do I? So uh, our, our <laughs> we're shifting things around as we, on the, on the uh, fly here. So from uh, Battalion 4, the honoree is Mark Villasenor, and the presenter is going to be Bill Brooklander, Brookhauer, right? Yes, sir. Brooklander. OK. Let me just check this off, because I think I'm going to get very confused very fast there. There we go. We're doing that intentionally, just to try to confuse <laughs> you. Once again, uh, thank you. Uh, Mark Villasenor is a Battalion 4 Firefighter of the Year. Uh, Mark was also uh, deployed about four hours ago to a uh, major fire in Northern California. Uh, Mark began his career in 1998 as one of our fire control workers. Fire control worker, uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with the fire service, <clears throat> excuse me, are the young men and women that are our hand crews. They put their uh, boots on the ground, clear brush, uh, basically work with hand tools to fight major wildland fires. Mark uh, became one of our dozer swampers. A dozer swamper is somebody that works with our construction battalion on the dozers, helps mark dozer line, assists the dozer uh, with maintenance items, etc. And in 2002, Mark was hired as a full-time firefighter with Ventura County Fire. In 2011, Mark was promoted to the position of fire engineer. Mark, as a lot of people that have been honored today, are extremely committed to our organization. Mark is a very active member in putting together our Engineers Training Academy. He's on our tiller certification cadre, and a, a tiller, for those that you know, uh, fire trucks, that's a hook and ladder. And every fireman will tell you that's our dream to be in the back bucket because that's the coolest job in the world. Mark's also on our SCBA cadre and trains our uh, members of our agency in auto extrication. <clears throat> Something unique about Mark, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm losing my voice from the dust and the smoke I've just been in. In 2002, Mark Villasenor was a dozer swamper. He was working a major fire in San Bernardino National Forest and one of the members of our organization, one of our, our fire captains, suffered a major medical emergency while being deployed on that fire. Mark, a very young dozer swamper, had the well, well for all, excuse me, where for all to not only render aid, but coordinated the rescue effort and made a huge difference in our members surviving. It was a truly a life and death decision. <clears throat> Mark was nominated for the Firefighter Year by his peers in Battalion 4 because of his infectious positive attitude. He's a guy that you can always go to with a, he's got a smile on his face and when he says he's going to do something, consider it done and stay out of his way. So on behalf of Mark Villasenor, I'm very proud to accept the award on, on his behalf. You know, we also put on a Law Day effort, uh, this is kind of the same as this, on, in April or May of each year. Um, and we've kind of got the crooks under control. They are not out on the night that we do that award. Uh, but somehow we can't seem to control the fires. So every once in a while, the firemen can't be here. And I know that you would say, well then, who do you think has the most important job, huh? All right, so from Battalion 5, firefighter Lucas Beller, Presented by Battalion Chief Norm Plot. Norm Plot. <laughs> oh, there he is. There he is. <laughs> you always have to keep the presenter guessing a little bit which way you come in. Keep them on their toes. Thank you. 
Um, it is a distinct honor to uh, give this uh, nomination to Lucas Beller. Lucas is uh, one of our firefighter paramedics out in Fire Station 28. And uh, I don't know if you, any of you saw the recent video that went viral where a gentleman's at a wedding and uh, all of a sudden somebody, one of the guests, was to choke on a piece of meat that they were eating. And uh, I kind of thought about Lucas when I was standing up here, is that he'd be that person that'd be running over there immediately and uh, giving the Heinlich maneuver to somebody to save their life. He's that type of person. The gentleman you see standing to my left, that smile on his face, that's 24-7. That's I've never seen a frown on his face. He's always positive attitude. And there's something in the fire service we talk about is bedside manners and, and the care that you give your patients. And I've always said, if, if anything ever happened to me or my family, Lucas Beller is somebody that I would like to be there taking care of them. He's compassionate, he's caring, he's somebody that is excellent at his craft, practicing uh, medicine and being a paramedic. He's somebody that works at, the, at his church at the homeless shelter and helps with medical, con uh, if somebody comes in with a medical at the homeless shelter, he helps, he's been doing that for a year. Uh, his wife, Nicole, is here with him. Uh, they're a little bit nervous because their oldest Christian, I think this is their first night that she's uh, 13, that is actually watching the two younger uh, Bellers, uh, Taylor 8 and Lindsay 5. So uh, back there, I think we were counting, we were up to the six text uh, during the evening. So uh, mom's a little nervous. And some of you moms out there kind of know what I'm talking about. So. Uh, but it uh, looks, like, uh, looks like the daughter uh, Christian's doing pretty good. But uh, this gentleman right here is somebody that I, I'm so proud of. Uh, he was somebody that took on a project, and you can imagine, there's 550 of us in the Ventura County Fire Department, 400 are line people and about 150 in the, in the administration. And this young gentleman here carried the torch for Office 365, and if you've ever taken four, 550 people and tried to teach them a new way to, to, to a new computer program, you can imagine how that goes. That goes over real well in your family, right? You ever, hey, we, we got this new program, right? That's always great. But Lucas took on that project, put a team together, and converted us on the day in June when the county switched over to the new program. And that takes a lot of dedication. It takes teamwork. Like a lot of my colleagues here from the other fire departments, working together, there's no I in team and that's Lucas Beller. Dedicated to the fire service, dedicated to the pub public and the people he serves, and dedicated to Battalion 5. So it's my pleasure to uh, congratulate Lucas Beller as Battalion 5 Firefighter of the Year. Okay, but if the program's right, that's the last we'll see of Norm tonight. <laughs> From the Oxnard Fire Department, Firefighter Josh Massey, presenter by Chief Sergio Martinez, and it says in the program that Sheila S. Daniel would be here, but I understand she did not come tonight, so she couldn't make it, okay. Oh, she's here. Oh, you know, yeah, they, they actually told me something. They told me she wasn't here. <laughs> All right, there you go. Thank you. Yeah, Sh Sheila is our, the Oxnard Kiwanis uh, current president, and that's the sponsor club for the City of Oxnard Fire Department for the Firefighter of the Year. So. Um, what can I say about Josh Massey? In the short bio here that they have, you know, he's a member of the USAR team. He's been with the department. It'll be 10 years in November. He'll be with us 10 years. Um, Massey is a very dynamic individual. Um, as all the firefighters here present, you know you have to adjust to a situation. Massey has been the example, in my opinion, of how you adjust to a situation. Um, he's been put in, uh, he's been asked to do a lot for the department. He never says no. He, he has a good way of, of, of looking at things long term. He understands where we're at today and he knew that we needed to be 
you know, in technology-wise ahead. Uh, Massey is, um, not only does he do his, his, keeps up in his training, his USAR, the police dive team, um, hazardous materials team, he's currently stationed out at uh, Station 6 on the sea shift, which is the area we have a lot of the water rescues. And, but uh, Massey particularly stood out in early in his career when we, we discovered he had a, a thing for computers. <laughs> he was one of those guys, he'd pick up the phone at nine at night and text him and say, hey Massey, some, my computer's doing something funny. What's going on? And uh, many a night I would see Massey, you know, after the workday was done, in the uh, dorm working on, you know, helping guys out with their computer. So at the direction of, uh, Battalion Chief Gary Sugich, when it came time to evaluate a new computer system for the entire department, for the CAT system uh, that we have joint with the police department, Massey was very instrumental in assisting with that. Not only did he sit in hours of evaluation, presentations for, for the whole city, um, you know, vendors coming in trying to tell you what their product was, Massey spent hours and hours. I would see him every day, whether he was on shift or not, he was there somewhere working. Um, heavily involved in the telecommunications and the implementation of all the alerting systems through all the fire stations. Now this took several years but Massey never stopped having the same enthusiasm as he does today. Um, recently one of the biggest things that the department took on that you know I personally saw was all the radio uh, reprogramming, the evaluation of all our radios, handhelds, engine radios and with the changing the communications plans with the county Massey was there. He physically was the one implement, implementing all these changes. He spent hours programming each and every one of our handheld radios. Um, so we're very proud to have Massey with us. Um, I can only hope that he continues with enthusiasm that he has shown throughout his, uh, coming up in his 10-year career. And I know that we're gonna be looking, you're gonna be hearing great things about Massey in the future. Um, now Massey's an interesting character. He, he, he just completed an 1,800 mile sail in 25 days by himself. So if you get a chance, you'll have to talk to him. He has some great stories. So I present to you our Oxnard Firefighter of the Year, Josh Massey. So from the Fillmore Fire Department, paramedic firefighter Chad Pankey being presented by Chief Rigo Landeros. Well, good, e good evening, everyone. Um, on behalf of the city of Fillmore and the Fillmore Fire Department, we want to congratulate all the recipients tonight. So let's give everybody a big hand of applause. It's with great pleasure um, that the members of the Fillmore Fire Department uh, announces the, uh, the Firefighter of the Year for this year a recipient would be Chad uh, Pankey. Uh, Chad Pankey was born and raised in Arlington, Texas and uh, graduated from Randolph High School in New Jersey. Um, he graduated the Middlesex Fire Academy in New Jersey in 1997 and in 1999 he moved to California to begin his career in EMS. Chad joined the Fillmore Fire Department in 2007, right at the time that Fillmore Fire was starting um, its paramedic program. He uh, attended the Oxnard Truck Academy that was uh, put on by Oxnard City for us, uh, MCI drills throughout the county, uh, multiple live burns uh, throughout the county as well. Uh, but the unique part of uh, a firefighter paramedic Pankey is that Pankey has been instrumental in starting the county's cardiac arrest management program. Uh, he has trained uh, almost every EMS fire agency throughout Ventura County on this program. This program has been responsible for saving many lives. This program was designed to choreograph the way first responders provide first aid to someone who is in cardiac arrest. So what does that mean? To put it in perspective, uh, Seattle, Washington has some of the highest rec uh, recorded cardiac arrest survival rates in the United States. Since this cardiac arrest management program was put into place in Ventura County, 
the survival rate has rapidly approached those of Seattle. And in certain categories, that cardiac arrest patient in Ventura County has a higher success rate uh, than uh, Seattle. In addition to the cardiac management um, program, firefighter uh, medic Panky has been instrumental in developing uh, and implementing numerous other programs within Ventura County's EMS system, including multi-casualty incident training and response, pre-hospital sepsis recognition and care, and ongoing EMS ed uh, education. Firefighter uh, Medic Panky is well respected by his fellow firefighters and our EMS partners. His strong work ethic, can-do attitude, and his willingness to learn has made him a valuable part of the Fillmore City Fire Department. Uh, Firefighter Panky uh, loves and is dedicated to EMS. He loves the fact that we save people and that he, he's made that his mission. On a personal note, I'm privileged to have him on our department due to the fact that his love of saving lives and making sure that all of us in the first responder arena are, are uh, prepared to do what it takes to save someone's life. So with that, I give you Firefighter of the Year, Chad Pankey. From the Ventura City Fire Department, paramedic firefighter Drew DeRosso, uh, presented by Chief David Ndaya. Good evening. I'd also like to say thank you to Ventura Kiwanis for having this tonight. Uh, we really look forward to this event every year, and I make sure it's one that I attend uh, for the following reason. I refer to my fire department uh, as our fire department, it's not mine. Uh, as one person, you're nothing. And with your department, that's what holds you up from the bottom. And I would refer to my fire department as the Ventura City Fire family, uh, which means we're a family, which means we don't always get along, we disagree, but in the end we have each other's backs and we'll do anything for one another. And when we hire people, one of the things I always say is, gone are the days that I believe of when I was hired. When I was hired, I was told, you know, you're a rookie, be here five years before you really have an opinion, and we'll let you know what that should be. And at the time, I said, yes, sir. And uh, I went about my day and did what I was told. Uh, that's changed. I can't afford to have people who just come on to a job. It's a career. It's a commitment. And as, as Drew's training chief, when he came on, I said, I need someone who's motivated, going to be efficient, be a great employee, make this place better, open your mouth when we can improve something, get involved. Don't wait a minute. Don't wait a minute. Get involved and please help me make this place the best it can be. And he did that. Drew came on in November of 2011. He was one of the uh, people we hired actually when we opened up a fire station that had been closed here in the city. And so he was a welcome sight for a lot of people in the community along with several other firefighters. And right away, he immediately uh, wanted to become a paramedic preceptor to train other paramedics that we brought on. He asked to be a mentor in the mentor program where he would be, in a lot of ways, a big brother to the people coming through the following academies and kind of be the inter, you know, the liaison between looking like a moron and asking an honest question. He'd step in the way and say, it's okay, it's not a bad question, I had the same question. Uh, he got involved in our regional hazmat team and got certified, went through a lot of training and is stationed uh, at, at our hazmat station right now. And he also, uh, when he was at station one, he took over the entire program that we call our medical, basically medical management, which is he handled the procurement, the budgeting, the allocation, the distribution of all the medical equipment for all of our paramedics. And, and we are an all paramedic department. And he took that on just since 2011. Um, with that, he took my advice a little bit too literally because the academy is about 18 weeks long. And in the academy, it is a little bit more of the kind of just do what you're told, be quiet, and say yes sir, yes ma'am. And Drew took my, my uh, advice a little too literally and he wanted to know everything. So when they said something, instead of yes sir, he kind of, well why do we do it that way? 
And in the academy, you don't normally ask an instructor, well, why do we do it that way? It's just, yes, sir, this is how we do it. So I had, I had instructors come into me as a training chief going, I don't know, that Drew has a little chip on his shoulder. And he goes, kinda, you know, he's kind of arrogant. He's questioning everything we're doing. So I pulled Drew aside. I said, hey, for your benefit, for you, I want to know what's going on. And as the color left his head and his eyes got about this big, he goes, Chief and I, you told me to get involved, and I just want to know everything. I need to know why we do these things. And so I felt bad, and I said, okay, 17 more weeks, and you can ask all you want. But just <laughs> shut your mouth until you graduate. And, and uh, I learned from his beautiful wife, Shauna, and they have a little girl, Tegan, right now, that uh, he's a human question mark. And I, was, I did not get that information before the beginning of the academy. So uh, he turned it around, shut his mouth for 17 weeks, and then I said, now for the next 30 years, ask away. Uh, but he graduated, and uh, like I said, he's really taken on the role that I asked him to, and uh, I'm so excited that he's one of our mentors to tell all of our newer firefighters do the same thing. Uh, we're a progressive, aggressive department, and it, I'm very, very proud to present the Ventura City 2015 Firefighter of the Year, Drew DeRusso. One of the first questions I asked was, do I have to give a speech? Well, I guess we don't, but I do want to say thank you to, to <laughs> I do want to say thank you to uh, Ms. Mayor uh, Cheryl Heitman, uh, Neil Andrews, thank you very much. And then uh, to the Kiwanis, thank you very, very much for the uh, recognition that you're giving to all of us. Thank you. You know, that city, city uh, Ventura City Fire Department's a whole lot, that, that family that he mentioned is a whole lot different than my family. I've been married 47 years and I still don't have an opinion. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and she's sitting right down here in front, and I just got the look. <laughs> uh, there are centerpieces on your tables. Those centerpieces were created by Heather uh, Dykes, who's seated right over here. And uh, each, yeah. They should go to each of the honorees as opposed to anybody else at the table. And if, you're, if there are two honorees at a table, then look around to the empty tables in the back or steal one from the table that doesn't have an honoree. And if there are any left over after that, you can just fight over them. <laughs> from the Federal Fire Department, which I understand includes uh, two naval bases in the county, is that correct? Okay. Uh, we have Fire Engineer Tori Anderson, presented by Fire Chief Gerald Clark. Uh, good evening, everyone. I have the uh, unfortunate task of following all these eloquent speakers. I'll do my best, and I'll try to keep it short. Uh, I'm new to California, and I'm new to Naval Base Ventura Fire Department, but I, I did get a good first impression uh, when I, I, I was given something to read about uh, Tori Anderson. He's our firefighter of the year. Uh, but first, I wanted to give my first impression. When I got to the fire station, I haven't been here a month. Uh, a firefighter came up to me and he already started telling me what I need to do as a fire chief, what things I need to fix. And he took me around and was showing me projects that he already did. He took an old room and turned it into a state of the art training room. And then he was telling me what projects I need to get done. And I hadn't been there a couple weeks. So I was thinking, I'm terrible with names, but I was thinking I got to remember this guy's name and I got I to gotta find him because he can do a lot of good things for us. He already has. So then, uh, a week or two later, I get a text saying that the Kiwanis is going to recognize uh, firefighters and uh, firefighters of the year and that I'm supposed to present. So I saw the, the uh, uh, short bio they gave on, on this gentleman and I saw his name and I thought, I got to meet that guy too because he's a guy that can do good things for our department. Well, I, I went to one of the stations and then everybody was calling him a, a Tory and I was like, wow, that's the same guy. So, so now I know why he's here. So uh, some things about him uh, was that he grew up in uh, Simi Valley in uh, Moore Park, California, and he attended uh, Moore Park College, and that's where he met his uh, lo lovely wife, Janelle, and they've been married for six years. Um, he graduated Moore Park High School in 98, and then uh, 
He joined the Oxnard College Fire Academy in 2001. And uh, he, I found out something interesting when I was talking to him the other day about that over dinner was that while he was in the, uh, the, the uh, fire academy class, the events of, uh, tragic events of 9-11 happened. And that brought home the, the dedication that's required in the fire service to him. And I, and I saw that dedication to him when I got to the fire department and met him. But it really drove it home for him, I, th I think. Uh, and then uh, 2000, from, from that point on, when he graduated the, the fire academy, he worked with, uh, as a volunteer firefighter with the uh, Fillmore Fire Department and uh, really honed his skills. And uh, we were lucky enough to pick him up in 2007. You know, it, when I read the thing, it made it sound like that he was lucky. We were lucky. We, we picked him up in uh, 2007, and he quickly w worked his way up to uh, uh, engineer. Uh, he's probably a little upset because his, his uh, truck is out tonight on the strike team, and, and he's here. But he's also honored to be here, I'm sure. Uh, He's done a lot of projects for our uh, fire department. Anywhere you can see something's been done in the station, he's had his hand in it. But another uh, really good thing he did for us is we've brought on uh, a lot of uh, new additional firefighters. He actually set up the orientation program for this from scratch, where he takes these firefighters that we bring in and uh, introduces them to our organization, how we operate, and, and makes them uh, feel like part of the family right away and brings them into a full-fledged member of our team. And uh, that was no easy task. Uh, he also does our uh, live fires. He runs our live fire trainer and runs our firefighters through there and uh, keeps them safe and gets them ready to do their job. And then uh, the, the other thing about him is he also runs, is if I could keep going, I'll, I'll try to stop here with one or two more. He runs the Firefighters Association, and they take care of our brothers and sisters that have needs. They do fundraisers. Uh, he runs a softball team. He runs our department store and uh, sponsorship. You name it, he's involved with it. And then on, a, on top of all of that, he does good things for the community. And one of the things I would like to mention is that he supports Team Fox, uh, and it's uh, put the fire out uh, to Parkinson, for Parkinson's disease. So. Just an incredible firefighter, and I'm honored to be up here to talk about him. And uh, thank you to uh, the Kiwanis Club, to all the uh, fire officers and firefighters, and all the community members and leaders here. Thank you. And uh, thank you, Tori. Thank you, Kiwanis. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. We're about to transition to a different part of our program. Uh, but before I do, I want to uh, let everybody know that we're very proud to put this on for the entire county. And I just have two little anecdotes. Uh, several years ago, I mean, we're talking, oh, God, i got to start dating myself now, probably 20 years ago. Uh, we were involved with Law Day, and uh, we, I know that there's a lot of other awards being given to different folks, at least in the, in the police departments. You know, every month you read it in the paper that so-and-so is being honored for being the police officer of the year. Uh, and I'm sure that happens within your departments, too. So I, I talked to the chief at that time, and, and I, this is the Ventura City Chief, and I, I see the police department chief, and I said, well, you know, aren't we duplicating this? I mean, I'm, every month I read something's going on like this, and it just seems like it's an awfully, a, a real duplication of effort. And, you know, I'm thinking maybe, you know, we're dedicated to the children of the community, and this is really kind of outside our mission statement. Maybe we ought to give it up. And he said, this is the chief of police, don't you dare. <laughs> well, you kind of take those words to heart when it comes from the chief of police. And what he was saying is, and what he told me later, he said that this is the, that was the only event, and I think this is the only event where we can honor our uh, outstanding officers, our outstanding firefighters on a countywide basis. So you should get your honor in front of your peers from an entire county. And so we've continued it, and we will continue this as we continued that. And I, I want to emphasize one other thing, and that is that we are honoring individuals here tonight, and they all are very deserving, you've heard it. They're all very deserving of the honors that are being given. 
But there's another reason for this ceremony, and that is that we're really honoring every firefighter who's out there in this county serving us. Uh, we're just so blessed to have the people we have that are doing the dedicated jobs that they're doing. And so it's not just you folks who are being honored, it's all your peers, so thank you. And now we transition into the Hero Awards. Um, in, in some years we call this the Hero or Good Samaritan Awards, and the, you've heard this before, there's a difference between a Samaritan and a hero, and it's the same as there's a difference between the chicken and the pig. You know, the chicken is, benefits us by giving us eggs, and we all are very appreciative of that, and we like them to be the benefactors that they are. Whereas the pig who gives us bacon is not just a benefactor, but a very committed person, a very committed animal. So anyhow, that's an old joke, and it does kind of describe the difference between a Samaritan and a hero. T tonight, we don't have any Samaritans on our list. It's all heroes. A Samaritan's a person who goes out and does a lot of good for the community, or does some good for the community on some sort of a proactive basis that is over and above what a normal person would do, but doesn't really risk his life in doing that, whereas the heroes, are a little more committed because they do risk their life in their endeavor. And so tonight we have four different recipients and these folks are being nominated by the different fire departments. So first from the Ventura County Fire Department is Maria Esparza, the recipient being presented by uh, Supervisor Andrew Sousa. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Andy Souza, I'm a, uh, and I am not a fireman. Uh, it means I've got the good sense to run from the burning building rather than into it. Uh, I'm kidding. Uh, I respect, uh, have the utmost respect for the fire service and the, the sacrifice uh, uh, daily that those gentlemen and ladies make. Um, as I said, I'm a supervisor with the Ventura County Probation Agency. I'm a probation officer. Uh, this young lady next to me is one of nine armed officers assigned uh, to me in our unit, and together we supervise uh, high-risk offenders in the cities of Santa Paula, Fillmore, uh, Ojai, and Ventura. Uh, this means we're out in the communities a lot. This means that we uh, uh, take on the responsibility for monitoring these people uh, in our communities. At times, that means we're working overtime to do this and get things done. So it was on a Saturday morning this past November, uh, Maria was on her way to work. Uh, to work an overtime shift on a Saturday, a very early morning. Uh, it was, happened to have been one of the first rains that we'd had. As she's driving to work, a vehicle sped past her. Uh, and given the conditions on the road, it was probably traveling a little faster than it should have been. That vehicle lost control, uh, and it collided with a wall and then a pole. Uh, and Marie witnessed this as driving on her way into work, as I said. Uh, very shortly, a fire ensued in the engine compartment, and the vehicle was getting involved in a fire. Uh, Maria ran to the vehicle and tried to render aid to the driver. Uh, he was unresponsive. He was conscious, but he was unresponsive. Through the course of trying to get his attention uh, to perhaps render him aid, um, she heard the sound of a baby crying. Uh, in the back of this truck, she, sounds were emanating from there. She couldn't see. There was a lot of disarray inside the vehicle. Uh, items as a result of the impact had been thrown around, but she did hear very plain cries. And it was about this time that another gentleman passed uh, this scene and began to render aid as well. Uh, he'll be recognized here uh, in just a moment. But at this point, Maria went to the other side of this vehicle. Uh, and it's worth noting at this time, uh, the, the fire was moving into the engine compartment at this point, And she could hear very clear cries of a baby. Um, herself and this other gentleman uh, managed to pry the doors of this vehicle open. Um, she reached inside and found that there was, in fact, uh, a car seat that had been turned as a result of the impact. Uh, and she, this um, young 18-month-old child was not easily visible at that time. Once they determined uh, where this baby was, in fact, they were able to get uh, the car seat uh, unbuckled and Marie reached in, um, pulled the baby and the car seat, it's still in the car seat from a car, <clears throat> and uh, exited the area and got to her own vehicle uh, to a place of safety for this child. The other person that was assisting at that point was able to remove the driver from the vehicle. Uh, all this before the fire department arrived. I think it's also worth noting here, um, and I have the 911 tape to prove it, uh, Maria was on the phone with 911 while all this went on, on hold with the phone cradled at her ear. Uh, 
it was a pretty intense time. Uh, I had a chance to speak with the fire captain uh, that was the first to arrive. He and his squad were the first ones to arrive on the scene from Oxnard Fire Department. Uh, he remarked to me that, you know, had the occupants of this vehicle had to rely on the response of the fire department, the outcome likely would have been uh, a tragedy and a loss of life. Uh, the vehicle was fully involved in flame when they got there, and were it not for the actions of Maria and this other bystander, uh, as I said, Mr. Nielsen, um, it certainly could have been a tragic incident. Um, it's, it's also worth noting on, on Maria, uh, she wasn't looking for any recognition out of this. She wasn't trying to be singled out for it. Um, my guys, when they work as an overtime shift, I may not be in the office that day, and we do check in and check out over the radio for our own safety, but I like to know that they're back. So that afternoon, toward the end of that day, remember this happened at 6 o'clock in the morning. I get a phone call about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Says, hey boss, uh, I gotta go see the doctor. Um, I, I ended up, I ended up uh, getting exposed to a bunch of smoke. And I, and I kind of thought, say again? We get exposed to a lot of risks out there, and we do put ourselves in harm way at times, but smoke inhalation is not typically something that we deal with. So when I finally got the story out of her and had to tease it out of her because she really wasn't looking for any, um, and even telling me what had happened. So once I found out what did, and I ran that up my chain of command, and, and I felt that um, those actions were heroic, and they, they merited recognition, and they merited um, um, what has transpired since then. Um, it's worth noting, as I said on that day, uh, Rhea made a conscious choice to run to the burning vehicle where most folks would probably run away from it. In doing so, um, she undoubtedly saved a life, uh, along with the, uh, the other uh, Good Samaritan that was willing to stop and assist as well. Um, and Maria, that embodies the heart of service for the men and women of the Ventura County Probation Agency. And as her supervisor, um, I couldn't be more proud of her. I want to thank you all and the Kiwanis Club for being here to recognize her. And um, as I said, um, I, I couldn't be more proud of her. Thank you very much. So he said I had to talk. Um, I just want to thank the Kiwanis Club. I do appreciate the recognition. To me, it's honestly, anytime I've gotten these recognitions, it's been really awkward. Um, in my mind, I just did what needed to be done. It wasn't really a decision. I mean, the option is run to the car or do nothing, and do nothing isn't really an option. Uh, I guess that's kind of attributed to the way my parents raised me, so uh, I did what I was supposed to do, and thank you for recognizing it. <laughs> So next up is uh, Brian Nielsen as the recipient being presented by Divi Division Chief Norm Plott. I thought we were through with him. I'm back. <laughs> uh, first of all, I'd like to say uh, in what, what an extraordinary thing by extraordinary people. Um, the acts that uh, were carried out that day. Uh, Tanya is here on behalf of Brian that can't be with us today. He's uh, one of our servicemen in the CBs. And not just any CB. Uh, just, he's been with the CBs for 13 years. But when you read his bio, some of the things that stand out is that he graduated at the top of his class. He has spent many tours in Iraq, including Fallujah, Operation Villagent Resolve. He's been to Mosul, Pakistan, Operation Lifeline. He's been to Ramadi. He's been to the Persian Gulf. He's dedicated and excellent pistol marksmanship rifle marksmanship. He's been involved in the global war on terror, Iraq campaign medal, national defense medal, good conduct medals, and the Navy E-ribbon. Could we just take a moment and stand for both Brian and Maria for extraordinary things here?
Tanya and, and Brian uh, were engaged just five weeks ago. And you can imagine after being engaged, uh, he was deployed on Thursday. So unfortunately can't be here. But I kind of feel as though his spirit is with us. So with that, I'd like to, just to take a moment and have Tanya introduce her family. Her sisters are here and her grandmother. Um, I'll just introduce to you my grandparents, uh, Florence and Bill Newman at table 11. <laughs> and my sisters, Sandy and Haley, that came with me tonight. Um, thank you guys for letting me come here and accept this award on Brian's behalf. Um, he's only been deployed six days, so um, it was kind of a surprise for me to come here, but I'm very appreciative, and so is he, and he said thank you to everybody, and um, he wishes he was here, so thank you. The events of that day, the, uh, that rain-slicked road, Somebody can just pass by and, and just keep going down the road. But Maria and Brian didn't. They stopped. And when you read what happened that day, when he went up to the car to pull this gentleman out, the intense fire was like a lot of times if you've ever gone to a campfire where you get, and it, just, it was just that much heat to where he had to duck down and try for the second time to pull the gentleman over the console out of the car and then out of harm's way. At the same time, Maria was there taking the baby out of the car seat. Folks, that is extraordinary things by extraordinary people. So on behalf of the Ventura County Fire Department, we would like to say thank you to Brian for his service, his dedication, and what he's done to save a life here in Ventura County. Nominated by the Ventura City Fire Department uh, is Josh Powers. Being, the awards being presented by Captain Lou Manzano and Chief David and Daya. Thank you again. Uh, I'm going to be a little bit more brief this time. The story of uh, Mr. Josh Powers is going to be told by Captain Lou Manzano here in about a minute. Uh, Lou was actually there that day. And uh, these stories are all very similar. And they're similar in that um, we're here to recognize heroes and firefighters. And often in the public eye, we're labeled as heroes. And I've never met a firefighter yet who has called himself or herself a hero. We're labeled that. Um, we signed up for this. We took an oath. We put a badge on our chest. And everyone in here knows that our families know that when crisis strikes, we do something. And we're the ones that do go toward that building. And what designates a hero to me is someone who didn't sign that piece of paper, someone who didn't take that oath, and someone who didn't say, hey, I'll, I'll do that today. And uh, what makes Josh a little bit different, uh, and it sounds like we have several of these heroes where there's a theme here, which is why I'm proud. Um, I stand in Josh's shadow. Josh is a retired Navy diver and, and a veteran, of, obviously, of the armed services. So on 9-11, you know, we talk about the firefighters and the military who perished and the, and the law enforcement and the civilians who helped one another. And I think today actually being 9-11, um, as a firefighter, I want to thank you for allowing me to serve my community back at home by protecting our country and allowing us to do that here. Because without your service, we couldn't do what we do here back at home. So for anyone in the room who's a veteran or served in our armed forces, thank you from the bottom of my heart. And for, before anything, you're a hero through that alone. So thank you to anyone who has served our country. He hates it just as much as the firefighters do. So um, he has a couple of very, very special guests here tonight that will make sense here in a second. And uh, without further ado, I just really want to uh, thank Josh for what he did and uh, hand you off to Fire Captain Lou Manzano uh, to let you know exactly what happened on uh, April 19th. Thank you, Chief. 
Hey, before we get started, uh, I would like to say again, thank you for your service, anybody in the military who served our country. So, and the chief is right, without you guys being here, we wouldn't be able to do our job as well. So, before we get started, I'd like to invite uh, your girlfriend, Jennifer, and your family friend, Natalie, come on up. I just want to show you what happens when our citizens get involved and take, take some risks. So, come on up. You're not going to get out of this. Get up here. All right, so uh, like uh, Chief and I was saying, uh, my name is Captain Lou Manzano and I have the distinct honor of uh, calling Josh my friend, I really do, and uh, I happen to be uh, humbled and uh, I appreciate the, the opportunity to notice you know, the efforts that you did. Um, on April 19th, about three o'clock in the afternoon, Medic Engine 2, which I was assigned to, received a call for service from our uh, FCC, which is our Fire Communications Center, for a reported uh, drowning on the beach down by Surfers Knoll. So if anybody's from Ventura, you know that's down on the south end of our, our city here. Uh, probably some of the most treacherous waters uh, in our coast here. Um, we received a call down there for a possible drowning. And uh, in route to the call, uh, our FCC dispatcher updated us that all the victims or the victim uh, was already out of the water. Uh, with that being said, of course, we're going to continue down there and see if uh, we can render either aid medically or continue with other victims, however it's fit. So we, we continue down there. Upon our arrival, I, I performed a quick head count and uh, accounted for all the victims. And I noticed that there was actually two victims, not just one, but two. Um, victim number one uh, was uh, Natalie. Natalie there, 18 years old, um, and uh, she was found to have significant uh, signs and symptoms of near drowning, exhaustion, and some exposure to the cold because it was a cold, windy day that day. Uh, victim number two, uh, Jennifer, was actually uh, Josh's girlfriend, and she was uh, also found with some uh, signs and symptoms of uh, near drowning as well. Both victims were taken care of. We confirmed that everybody else was out of the water. Uh, our medical team from the engines uh, and the ambulance were able to take care of them medically and uh, so on and so forth. They were, uh, I think, Natalie, you were not, I think. I know for sure you were transported to the hospital so you could keep, uh, get further care. And uh, Jennifer, uh, after our, our paramedics treated her, she was able to, uh, to uh, get better as we were there. After the whole uh, incident transpired, it was important for me to get some information on what happened. And the whole time when we were at this incident, I had Josh standing next to me, not knowing really who he was. So I started asking some bystanders, and everybody pointed me over to Josh. And um, in talking to Mr. Powers here, he informed me of what exactly transpired, and he was downplaying this whole thing like he was just out there, you know, helping his girlfriend and, and her friend. But subsequently, they ended up leaving, and I felt the desire to follow up with this young man because I felt that there was something extraordinary that happened. After interviewing him, what ended up happening was exactly this. They had showed up that day at around noon for a day at the beach, and it was Josh and his girlfriend and your little daughter and Natalie, and they had set their shop up there and were going to enjoy a day at the beach, and they had been there since noon. Uh, subsequently, about 3 o'clock, they decided they were going to leave, but like me and most people here, they wanted to go out into the water one last time. So as they did, they made their way out to the water, and that particular day, uh, we had some onshore winds which caused some high surf, 8 to 10 foot surf, and if anybody's been in the ocean around here, we know that that's pretty significant surf. We can create some significant rip currents and stuff like that. So. As, uh, as the ladies were out there enjoying the, the uh, water, they were about 50 feet uh, from the shoreline there, um, they noticed that after a short time, they started to get into a little bit of trouble. They got swept off their feet. The whole time, you guys, I believe you guys had boogie boards, correct? As they were uh, getting swept off their feet, they were able to manage to hold on to these boogie boards. And subsequently, a set of waves came, and they both went under the water. They came back up. Inadvertently, they started losing their flotation devices, these boogie boards. After talking to Josh, he, he said that the only time he realized that something was wrong is he recognized a boogie board that had washed up, and he noticed that nobody was on the end of it. So it caused a sense of alarm for Josh. And as he looked up, he could see his two family members being swept out into this, into this rip current. Um, jumping straight into action, I think uh, some of that may have come from your background as a, as a Navy diver. He obviously felt compelled to get involved and go out and help. As he made his way out there, the, the, his family members continued to go out further and where they were probably about 150, maybe 250 feet offshore caught in this current. 
and some significant waves had come in. So after a few waves of going under the water, uh, making his way towards his family members, Josh was able to make contact with his girlfriend and was able to support her, uh, assist her back to shore to a position where he, she could make her way back out of the water. Knowing that we still had another family member missing, which was Natalie, uh, he was able to get back out past the surf and uh, begin a hasty search. Now, I don't know if anybody's ever been in the choppy ocean out here, but you can't see a thing. So at this point, Josh doesn't see anybody else out there. We can imagine what, uh, I can only imagine what you were thinking. And he went to go under a wave, and as he goes to go under a wave, he sees a clump of hair 10 feet away, 20 feet away. About 20 feet away, he sees a ball of hair, and that's all he saw. So in his training, I'm sure that kicked in. He was able to get over to this spot, grab this clump of hair, pulls it up, and fortunately enough, on the other, on the other end of it was Natalie. Unfortunately, she was unresponsive, essentially unable to fend for herself, um, but she's also, now she's in the arms of, of Mr. Powers. Now, uh, I've been a lifeguard for 23 years. Uh, I've been a firefighter for 15 years. I'm in this ocean all the time. I understand the power of this ocean. So to make your way back out with a per pretty much unresponsive patient is an extraordinary effort, extraordinary uh, task in itself. He was able to make it back into shore with Natalie and was able to uh, get her up out of harm's way and begin, not only did he save her life, but now he's beginning his first aid treatment that he learned in the, in the service. And then this is when we showed up. So uh, in my opinion, I think we can all agree that if it hadn't have been for Josh's courage, uh, his previous experience and his training that he received from the, on the service, that uh, there's a good chance that these uh, two young ladies that are standing up here before us uh, may not be here today. So, Josh, uh, again, uh, we've spoken in the past, it is my distinct honor to, to really call you uh, a hero. Um, I know you made a difference to at least your family member and everybody else here, and uh, I really appreciate all your efforts. I know, what it, uh, I know that uh, your service and all that stuff kicked in, and that's exactly uh, why we need people like you in our community. So I appreciate it, and I'm sure on behalf of the, the city and the fire chief's office, uh, again, I, I love to call you my friend, and uh, you went above and beyond. I'm sure that's not. I talked to your family. This isn't the first time you've done this either. So we need more people like you in this community. So anyways, I appreciate your service. Thank you very much, and congratulations. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much. Um, first of all, I don't think I'm a hero. Uh, uh, everybody that's not here with us right now is a hero. And uh, just a quick little uh, saying I uh, like to say in the, being a United States Navy diver, God bless America. From the Santa Paula Fire Department, uh, the recipient is Richard Reiklowski and is presented by Assistant Chief Dustin Lazenby. I'm Dustin Lazenby with Santa Paula Fire Department. On uh, March 30th of this, this year, Richard uh, arrived home. Uh, he was in his vehicle with his girlfriend, and he, uh, when he pulled into his driveway, <clears throat> he looked uh, to the house next door, and he noticed there was quite a bit of smoke coming. What it looked to him looked like it was coming from the backyard, maybe a barbecue. But he um, continued to watch and to wonder if this was actually his neighbor barbecuing or if it was something else. And as he noticed that the the amount of smoke continued to grow and turn black, that he knew it it, it was coming from inside of the house, the back part of the house, um, which ended up being the kitchen and the back bedroom that was uh, on fire. So he uh, immediately called 911 to get our wheels turning and then he went over to his neighbor's house and began banging on his neighbor's door to try to alert any occupants if they were home. So as he was banging on the door over and over again, the door finally um, 
opened up and he was faced with uh, a lot of smoke in his, in his, coming into his face and uh, there was heavy smoke at that point. And when he leaned down um, to get away from the smoke, he saw his neighbor that was face down in, in the living room unconscious. So immediately he, he went into action, decided he needed to, to grab his neighbor and that's what he did. And he went in and was able to grab his, his neighbor and pull him out to the sidewalk to the street. And that was before any of our engines got on scene. And I, I know uh, without a question that his quick action in, in, or quick thinking and, uh, and action and, um, and his willingness to act uh, saved his neighbor's life that day. There's absolutely no question. And it's my honor to present this award to him today and say thank you. Thank you. I'd just like to take a moment to uh, thank Ioannis and the uh, Santa Paula Fire Department and Police Department for everything they do for us every day. And uh, I'd just like to thank God, and I'm very happy he put me where he needed me at that date and time. Thank you. That concludes the program, but before we actually close, I'd like to make a couple of observations. Um, we have sponsors at Kiwanis. Uh, a lot of our sponsors just support us generally. We go out and ask for some money because we can't do the things we do without it. Some of us for scholarships, uh, and then some of us for fire services day like this. Unfortunately, on the program, there are a number of sponsors that we have that were not mentioned, and I'd like to mention them now. One of our major sponsors is Morgan Stanley with through Brad Dykes. They're very generous to us. They have been for a couple of years. And then in the bronze sponsor category, the missing sponsors are Brent Jacobson, or excuse me, Brent Jacobs, who also was with Morgan Stanley, but uh, he and I go back quite a ways, and so he's, I guess he supports me, I don't know. Uh, Ventura Community Bank, and uh, there, there a couple of them are here tonight. Uh, they're here as Ojai Community Bank, at least that's what they put in the reservation. Uh, but they have been a sponsor for a couple of years, they've been very generous with us. Arnold, La Rochelle, Matthews, Van Connes, and Zerbel. You can only say that because I used to be a member of that firm. Uh, they made a commitment to me for two years and they've kept it. Fast Signs of Ventura and finally Jensen Design. So those are folks who support us who are not in the program. And then I, I want to recognize one significant sponsor to this program, and that's John Asher, who's seated at uh, table number five over here. Yeah. We're, we're calling John the Hall of Fame sponsor. He's our title sponsor. He's our event sponsor, however you want to name it. And he has made a very significant contribution to this very event, and he started that contribution in 2002, and he's given that amount of money, and it's a significant amount of money, every single year since then. So he's been in this with us for 13 years, and it would be very difficult for us to put on this event without his, his generous support. And he does it because he wants to give, not just because he any, any recognition he might give. In fact, this is the first time he's attended the event. So, so thank, thank you very much, John. We hope you'll be here year after year. So I'm probably omitting a bunch of stuff, but that's only because nobody told me what to do. And as I told you before, being married for 47 years, that's kind of what I am used to. So I'm going to conclude this event. And thank you very much. Thank you, all of you, for what you do for us. Every one of you is a hero. Now, one more thing, uh, that, uh, the organizers of this event uh, have been very industrious in getting everything done, but the real organizer of the event is Adele Bonji. Adele's over here. <laughs> Those of you who have been here before know that this is a little bit different than what we've done before, and she has put her heart and soul into it and has made the, have made, made the changes, even though there are a lot of us who said, hey, stick to the script and you won't have to do so much work. She decided to do the work. And one of the things she did is she engaged the services of Bruce Barrios, 
who is here now to uh, play your dance music. He's gone around to each of your tables to figure out what it is you want to hear. So those of you who want to stick around for that will be here until 11 o'clock. Thank you very much. That concludes the program.